Hi friends, how are you? Happy Thursday. I hope I'm not echoing too bad. I can't find my microphone. So we're just gonna wing it. How's everybody doing? This thing has like this crazy long lag. So say hi if you're here, tell me where you're from. Um, I'm so excited to talk about spring cleaning. Um, it's something I love to do and I know a lot of people don't love to do it. So we're gonna, we're gonna make it easy and we're gonna do it together. Thank you guys so much for joining. We have a lot of things that we're gonna go over today. We have a lot of things to talk about. Um, we have been super busy around my office. We have, wait, I'm on the wrong side. We have um, new Simplified Planners launching May 2nd. And we have been, I feel like we've been working on these particular planners for like seven years. <laughs> we're celebrating our 10 year business anniversary and we pulled all the stops with this year's planners. They are just so cute, and I could not be more excited about the covers. Um, they're different, I will tell you that. They're a little different than what we've done in the past. Happy Stripe will still be making a comeback, as usual, but um, we are just so excited to show them to you. So April 25th is the big day. That is the day that we are going to unveil our covers and show them to you over on Instagram. So make sure you're following Simplified over on Instagram, that is where we will be showing you all of the covers. We're gonna do it all at one time. We're gonna show you them like back to back to back so you don't have to wait all day to see them all. Um, and there are six. So there's actually, I forgot to hide it. There's one right here, um, but you probably can't see it very well. But if you go check on Instagram, we might have shown a little sneak peek over there. Um, and I might be showing some more sneak peeks soon too because basically I can't keep a secret. Um, so hi, thank you for joining me. I hope I'm not echoing too bad. I can't find my microphone, so whatever. We're just gonna wing it. Okay, so today we are talking about spring cleaning, right? I bet we're all ready for winter to be over, even me, and I live in Florida, where it's actually never winter. Um, but we're all ready for summer, and we're all ready for things to kind of relax outside, and that means that it's time to really dig into our homes and declutter. Every time I talk about this, people look at me like I'm crazy and they're like, Emily, you do this for a living. Like you still have things to declutter. How does that even work? Well, let me first explain to you about what clutter is. So when we think about clutter, we often think about having a garage sale, right? Or yard sale. So you take the things in your house that you don't want anymore or that don't fit anymore or whatever and you sell them, right? So we think that's the clutter, right? Like the extra stuff, but that's actually not the case at all. That's part of it, but that's actually only a small part of it. So when we're talking about clutter, we're talking about anything in your home that is noise to you, okay? So we're talking about embracing a new feeling for our spaces to be places of rest and respite, right? So you want your home, no matter the size or shape, or situation, you want your home to feel like a place you can rest. And that looks different for all of us, okay? Some of us, that might mean true minimalism, which is not me at all. I have three small children, so we don't do that. But for some people, that's their thing. For other people, you might be more comfortable with more stuff in your house. But finding that place where you feel like your home is restful is magic. And it's not something we devote a lot of time to because we're all so busy and we all have so many things going on. So what we've done is we have actually started a ruthless declutter challenge and I call it ruthless for a reason. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Starting April 9th, going through the 15th for you to devote any amount of time you can on those days to decluttering your home. So decluttering means getting rid of extra stuff, obviously like what we talked about, things you don't want or need anymore, but it also means trash. And you're looking at me like, I'm clean, Emily, I don't have trash in my house, but you do, you do, you have tags, you have cups, you have boxes, there's trash, there's packaging, um, there's stuff, we all have it, okay? So we're gonna go room by room, piece by piece, drawer by drawer, closet by closet, and we're gonna dig into everything and we're gonna get rid of trash, we're gonna get rid of clothes that, have, that we've outgrown. Um, ladies, we're gonna give ourselves permission to let go of clothes that we might fit into one day. Now. There are exceptions to that rule, obviously, if you have goals in mind or you are pregnant or whatever, cool. But I'm also giving you permission to get rid of the clothes that don't fit, right? Like I have jeans in my closet that I'm like, I'll wear those one day, I'll wear those when I was in college. No, no. 
Um, we're going to get rid of those things. We're also going to get rid of like if we if my youngest, my my twins are three and they're our last children, last one. And they're outgrowing clothes. So I need to take some of the clothes they've outgrown. Some of them I need to donate. Some of them I'm going to save to give either to my little brother and his wife one day, or I'm going to keep like the extra special few items for my kids as they grow up to give to their kids. So we have like a couple like little heirloom pieces, but we're going to go piece by piece. And we're going to also not just get rid of stuff. We're going to also put things in the right place. So if you have, for instance, I always use this example, but let's talk about mail files, right? And I know you guys have questions, by the way, I see them popping up over here. Um, that's awesome. And my team is watching and they're going to grab them and they're going to text them to me when we're ready. And I have my text up over here so I can watch that as well. So just know if I'm not answering your question, I'm going to get to it, I promise. So um, we are also going to make sure that things are in their places where they belong. So like this is my this is the example I always use. But think about like nail files, right? Like maybe we have nail files in our kitchen drawers because we're like, well, sometimes I'm standing in the kitchen and I want to file my nails. So I'll keep that there. Or maybe I'm in my workspace or wherever. And I want to keep the nail files there because sometimes I might need it or because it like works in a junk drawer, right? Like you might need that in a junk drawer. You don't, A, you don't need a junk drawer and B, keep your nail files with your nail polish in your bathroom. So keep everything where it belongs, right? Um, I'm thinking about just some other things that we have throughout our house, like that we would keep in multiple places. You want to keep all the things together, one place for every type of thing. So the nail polish example, keep all the nail polish in one place. And then when you need it, you just go to that one particular place to use it, right? So that's another reason why the declutter challenge is so important is that, you know, we get busy and we stick things in random places. And my house is the same way. Like we have a junk drawer in the kitchen. We don't need a junk drawer. That can be my drawer where I keep like stationery and stamps and things to write lunchbox notes in, um, in that drawer. But like the junk that's in there doesn't need to be there. The screwdrivers that are in my kitchen cabinet, like steps from the garage, they don't need to be there. All the screwdrivers can go in the garage in the toolbox, right? So that's what we're going to do. And some of you might be thinking like, holy moly, I'm completely overwhelmed. I'm not you, Emily. I don't write books on this for a living. Like my house is completely cluttered and that's totally fine. That's totally, totally fine. We're all going to be starting from different places in terms of clutter. Some of us may have lots and lots of clutter and like major things to dig out of. And to you, I say it's possible. Okay. Not only have I, have I seen specific rooms in my house go from that to decluttered and simplified, but I've helped friends do this. So if you are starting from a place of like massive clutter, I don't want you to be intimidated. I also don't want you to feel like you have one week to get this done. The point of doing this declutter challenge, I'm selfishly doing it for myself <laughs> because I know I need to do it in my house and particularly in a couple of rooms. Um, but I just, I'm going to do it for me. And I thought it would be really fun for us to do it together because community is so important. And who, where do we find community to do this kind of stuff with, right? It matters especially when there's things going on in the outside world that we can't control. It matters what we're doing to simplify our homes and to simplify our lives for ourselves and our families in the only space that we can kind of control the places where we live. Right? So this is not just, Hey guys, we're organizing. This is like, we're doing this for a really special purpose. We're doing it because the people that live in your house matter. We're doing this because you deserve rest. You deserve to feel like you are home when you come home, right? So um, I'm going to have, we have a really busy summer with a lot of big things coming up. And so the reason that I'm doing this is because my oldest is going to be home all summer. I'm going to be cutting back at work a little bit to spend more time with him during his summer off. Um, my little ones will be home too. Like there's just a lot of things going on and a lot of plans that we have for the summer. And I want our home to feel like it's ready for summertime. Does that make sense? Like I want our, our home to feel like we are ready to have fun and not have to be constantly staying on top of all of these things all the time. Um, so doing this once or twice a year is really beneficial to give yourself that starting at square one feeling, right? Okay. So I have a lot of things to share with you today and I have some papers on my desk that I'm going to go one by one um, and explain in terms of the ruthless declutter challenge. It starts April 9th. And we're going to do a little bit every day leading up to April 15th, where we'll finish up. Um, this is seven days, right? 
And then on that Monday, so the day following, we will start, if you are interested, you don't have to, a joint Instagram yard sale. And I'll give you all the details on how that works, but the joint Instagram yard sale is where you post to your Instagram something you have for sale, um, you put a price tag on it, and use a special hashtag so that people who are trying to follow this joint Instagram sale can click the hashtag and see all the things listed. Um, and then you just have people leave their email addresses or do whatever you want to like collect money and ship to them. Um, what I typically do is I'll post it. I'll tell, I'll, I usually do US only because it's more complicated to send things overseas. So do US only, shipping's included, here's the price. Um, I'm mostly only posting like a, a larger ticket price item. Other things I would do like at a yard sale at my house or donate or things like that. Um, but then have someone post their email address if they want to buy it and you get their, on the back end, you get their shipping address. Um, you can invoice via P PayPal. That's just a suggestion. Again, you don't have to participate in that part of it, but um, I thought it would be fun just as an option. So, okay, Ruthless Declutter Challenge. I am gonna be sending you, there is a link here somewhere in this caption to sign up for our newsletter list. And on April 2nd, I'm gonna send you this, and this is our master plan, okay? So let me just walk you through the master plan, but be sure you sign up to get all of this in your inbox. You can actually print this out and keep it with you to know the schedule. So you have prep work to do before April 9th. That is get some trash bags, okay? You're gonna use trash bags for donations and trash bags for trash, because you're gonna find trash as you go, I promise. Um, I recommend getting like the big hefty like black trash bags because they kind of have some stretch to them. Um, just to note, if you don't, if you're sensitive to smells, which I'm very sensitive to smells, which is just a very strange and random fact about me, don't buy the ones that have like Febreze in them or they will drive you nuts. Like, <laughs> um, I just get the regular plain old black trash bags. Okay. Also, create a great playlist. Find some good music. Come and follow me on Spotify. I have a ton of playlists over there. Our monthly playlists are my favorite. Um, we even have a launch day playlist that we just use to like get excited in my office. Um, and that one's really fun. My kids especially love that one. So get some good music. Determine a spot in your home where donations are gonna be gathered. That can be in your garage. That can be in a corner of a bedroom. That can be in a hallway, wherever you want. Find a place where you can put the things that are gonna be donated. If you can, choose a place with a door where you can shut it at the end of the day and you don't have to look at it. If not, I would say line it up along the hallway and just keep, keep putting things there, keep collecting things there. What I typically do is I don't bag it. If I'm gonna donate it, I don't bag it. Um, I just make a big pile and then at the end of it, I'll, I'll bag the things. Um, Number four, schedule a pickup. So many places will come to you and pick up the nice things that you would like to donate. Um, the, that includes the Salvation Army. That's the one that I use. Um, they're wonderful. And then you can schedule a pickup and they'll come to you. What I suggest doing is if you're gonna schedule a pickup for items that are, you're gonna donate, schedule it for the very last day. Then you kind of have a goal to work toward, like get this thing, get this stuff going and have it ready to go by the time they come. Um, or determine a donation spot. There are a zillion amazing organizations that will take anything from old prom dresses to be gifted to, to girls who are looking for those, um, to nice work clothes that can be given to women who are in need of something like that, going out on job interviews. I mean, there's great organizations. If you know of any, especially national ones that are available to everyone, feel free to post those here. It would be great to have like a spot for people to come and look for things like that. Um, and then you're going to block daily time from the 9th through the 15th to declutter. That might look like 15 minutes and, and that's fine. Don't feel like you need to spend eight hours of your day doing, I will not be spending eight hours every day doing this. My kids are in school. Well, my little ones are in school three hours, three, a little more than three hours every day. <laughs> and that's the time I have to work every day. And for that week, that'll be the time I have to do this. So um, and then I'll probably end up working at night to like play catch up. But um, that's how much time I'll be dedicating to this. And remember, you don't have to be all the way through with this at the very end. Um, this will give you a serious head start, though, no matter where you're starting from. And what I've done, and I'll kind of list out next, is broken it down by day 
And that's the fun part of this. We are going to go day by day in the same rooms of our homes. It'll look different for each of us depending on our home setup and what home, you know, what rooms we have and don't have, but this is a general list for us to work off of. And again, this is in the master plan um, that I'll be emailing out on April 2nd. So I just saw my team posting a link. I think it's in the caption here somewhere too. So sign up for that. If you're already on our newsletter list, you'll get it anyway. So don't worry about it. All right. Monday, April 9th. You guys ready for this? We're going to start in the hardest room of the house. And I believe that as your kitchen, because it's the place you spend a lot of time. So um, it's also the place where we tend to collect things that we might not need or trash will accumulate or junk drawers will magically appear in random drawers. So um, we're going to start in our kitchen. And that means we're also going to tackle the fridge. And if you have it, a pantry. Um, yeah, we're going to tackle those places and they're hard. Now, caveat. Decluttering does not equal organizing. And you're like, what are you talking about? Decluttering does not equal organizing. Decluttering means decluttering and simplifying and getting down to the best, your favorite, and the necessary. Okay? That means going through, and if you have 16 spatulas, getting rid of some of them. You only need one. Unless you really love to cook, and then you might need more than one. Or if you don't want to get rid of them all, put them aside so that you have backups. I used to always use this example of um, an ice cream scoop. Like you don't need two ice cream scoops. And literally the last time I said that on a Facebook Live, my ice cream scoop broke. So <laughs> my kids are like, no! And now granted, I just used a spoon and it was fine. But if you have things that you'd like to keep as backups, obviously like stick those somewhere. Uh, I saw somebody said Nana. Yeah, Nana would come over and be like, mm -mm, you don't need that. My mom can walk in my house and like smell if there is a Tupperware without a lid. You don't need that, Emily. <laughs> um, okay, so kitchen, day one. We're going in to the kitchen, the fridge, the pantry, okay? And the point about this is it's ruthless. This is not a sit and stew over it and deal with emotional baggage and all of that. This is a rip the Band-Aid, get rid of it if you don't need it, declutter challenge, okay? So we're going to do it fast, and we're going to do it together. And I will be posting on my Instagram over at Emily Lay um, as I go. And probably doing like Instagram lives and showing you what I'm doing, right? Okay, so what I've said about decluttering does not equal organizing. Organizing happens after you declutter, okay? So if you get done with the declutter part throughout the day and you have time to organize, to put things, you know, like to put all your dishes in one place and to organize your pantry a little bit, that's awesome, do it. Um, but the goal here is not the picture perfect pantry that you can put on Pinterest with like, things lined up in rainbow order. That's not what we're doing here. We're decluttering. We're getting rid of the extra, the excess, the baggage, right? Um, I want you to also remember that it's very normal to feel to feel things as you go through this, to feel all the feels, um, especially when we move on to the next day. On Tuesday, we're going to do closets and clothes. Um, and you'll notice I'm not saying we're doing master closet, master bedroom at the same time. We're doing all the closets and all the clothes because once we get into the like, the groove of decluttering our closets, we're going to also do our kids' closets or the guest room closet or whatever. We're going to we're going to do it all at once. That also means drawers. So on day two, we're going to do closets and clothes. And you will feel feelings as you go through your closet. You will feel guilt about why did I buy this thing? It doesn't fit me right. And I feel crappy when I wear it and I don't want to have it anymore. And that is fine. You're going to rip that Band-Aid. If it's not something that you ever wear, it doesn't need to sit there and remind you of how tight it feels on your stomach. OK, just speaking from experience, we're going to get rid of that stuff. Um, we're and, and it might mean that you're left with like not as much stuff in your closet and you're looking at your closet thinking I have empty space and you're going to have this gut feeling of I need to go buy more things to fill this empty space. And that's not what you need to do. We're going to start becoming comfortable with empty spaces on our shelves and empty spaces in our closets and having less in our drawers. Because that margin, that margin that you feel, no matter the size of your home or closet or whatever, that margin that you feel is brain space. And that's brain space for you to rest and to eventually be filled up with creativity or whatever. It's less decisions you're making when you're walking into your closet in the morning. Um, there's magic there and you have to experience it to understand what it feels like, but we're gonna get there. So 
Um, another note on closets and clothes. If you haven't read A Simplified Life, wait, I'm so backward. This book, no, wait, that book. If you haven't read A Simplified Life, it's my book that came out um, late last year. And it is all about doing this in 10 key areas of your life. So there's a whole chapter on clothes. Um, there's a whole chapter in cleaning out your space. And um, I highly, I wrote it, but I highly recommend it if you're really looking for like a deeper dive into this. And you have time before the ninth to read it. Um, number three, Wednesday, we're gonna do bedrooms. So we've already done the drawers and the closets or whatever you have in terms of clothes. Then we're gonna do bedrooms, we're gonna do the nightstands, we're gonna do shelves in the kids' rooms, we're gonna do, you know, that might mean tackling some toy situations, um, some books, we're gonna do bedrooms on the third day. Uh, on Thursday, April 12th, we are gonna do bathrooms. So we're gonna dig into cleaning out the empty shampoo bottles in your shower. Um, the, the face creams that you bought and don't use, we're gonna get rid of those. Um, Friday, April 13th, Friday the 13th, we're going to be doing, um, living in laundry spaces. So you may not have a laundry room and that's totally fine. Your washer and dryer might be, the, you may live in New York city and your washer and dryer are downstairs somewhere. Um, but maybe you have a space in your house where, or your apartment where you store the tide or whatever. We're going to tackle that area or any like, um, mud rooms or things like that, or uh, the living spaces. So your family room or living room, wherever you spend time with your family, um, we're gonna tackle those spaces on that day. Then on Saturday, and I put this on Saturday on purpose, we're gonna tackle the garage. And that's one of the areas in my house that like, I'll show it to you when we do it, but it, it's awful. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's like stuff gets thrown in there and there's like kid bikes everywhere. and. Like, I don't know, things I need to get rid of that I've put out there, but I've never done anything with. It's probably my, my biggest pain area. And I, I selfishly put it on Saturday because I need my husband to help me. And my kids are going to help me, by the way, on that Saturday. So, yeah, yeah, they're going to help. Raise them right. Teach them early. Um, okay, and then lastly, on Sunday, April 15th, we're going to do other spaces. So you might get through the week um, and find, like, I wasn't really done with the kitchen or I didn't finish the garage on Saturday. Or maybe you have, like, a playroom or like an office or some kind of like other space um, that you want to address on Sunday. Or maybe you didn't finish something and you want to kind of do that on Sunday too. So Sunday is kind of like the catch up day or maybe you're done and you're just going to take the day to rest. Fully support that as well. Um, and then on Monday, April 16th, we're going to begin the Instagram yard sale with the hashtag simplified yard sale. So hashtag simplified yard sale. Um, you can also, throughout this thing, if you want to share this on Instagram or on Facebook, use the hashtag Ruthless Declutter Challenge. It's really long, but there was no way for me to shorten it. So whatever. That's what we're going to do. Um, so Master Plan is going out April 2nd. Go and sign up in, uh, in the caption here to get this Master Plan in your inbox. If you do that, if you sign up for it, you'll get it April 2nd. If you're already on the list, you're good. Um, we also have an... Um, if somebody on my team could add this to the caption, if I didn't already do this, this is our spring cleaning checklist. So this is different. This is more along the lines of like actually cleaning your home. So doing things like uh, storing winter clothes and putting them away, uh, replacing light bulbs that are out and air filters, uh, wiping down everything in your house. This is a really, it's really cute. Number one, I used our color coding stickers that are uh, in our shop. Um, and then, um, yeah, this is just kind of me working through it. But this is a really good thing to do after the Ruthless Declutter Challenge, um, once you've kind of cleared out your space. Okay. All right. So there's that. There's that. I see questions. And before I get to those questions, I have a couple of things to share with you. Number one is something we announced today, and it's so exciting. So many of you did our Simplicity Challenge in January, okay? That's, that was 31 days of um, one tiny, tiny, tiny little challenge every day, took less than 15 minutes every single day, and it cost exactly zero dollars every day. Many, like tens of thousands of you did it with us. And it, honestly, like the simplicity challenge every year like goes viral, it's nuts. So many people get excited about it because it's easy and it works. And like our challenges are so simple that anyone can do them. Um, 
Faith Gateway, who is an amazing partner to us and just a really, really, really great account to follow if you're not already following them. They are hosting a Simplicity Challenge again. So starting April 1st, you can work through the Simplicity Challenge with them. Um, they'll be posting the daily reminders over on uh, their account. But I put, I put the link in the caption here where you can go and um, sign up to do it with them. And they'll send you the Simplicity Challenge ebook. So it's like all of the little challenges all at one time. Highly recommend. Um, and Faith Gateway, thank you for doing that with us. We are super excited to do that again. OK, next, our spring cleaning sale continues. It started yesterday. And our spring cleaning sale goes um, through midnight Friday, Pacific Standard Time. But um, our shop, not everything is on sale, but many things in our, in our shop are on sale up to 70% off. And I'll tell you that um, the uh, art prints, so some of our favorite art prints that are like beautiful calligraphy and gold foil and letterpress, all kinds of beautiful things that you can frame and put in your home um, are like 70% off. So that's they're growing really fast because they're on like super sale so go and check that out our spring cleaning sale is for us to clear out our warehouse and get ready for new products so we have tons of new products that we're launching um on may the 2nd and a couple before and after but stay tuned for that and go shop the spring cleaning sale and help us ruthlessly declutter our warehouse <laughs> okay next that's at emilylay.com um, I told you about Cover Reveal. So Cover Reveal is on April 25th, and we're going to show you our six new Simplified Planner covers. And I will tell you, two of them are throwbacks. So we are bringing back two covers that were bestsellers in the years past. And this is us celebrating our 10 years in business. Um, there were two particular Simplified Planner covers that you guys loved and flew off the virtual shelves, and so we are bringing them back. Um, if you have guesses, I would love to know, but um, I, one of them I, has been guessed before. Um, but then we have uh, the other ones that we'll be unveiling and they're different. They're new. We, we like did something a little different this time and I'm so excited to show you one of them. I don't have mine yet, but I cannot wait to get my hands on it. And um, we actually ordered more of one particular cover because I have a feeling it's, it's brand new and it's going to go fast. So unveiling that on April 25th, and then we're launching it on May 2nd. And as you know, during launch week, so the week between cover reveal and launch, we do Facebook Lives every day. So I will be here on Facebook, walking through all kinds of organizing and decluttering and how to use your planner and the best accessories and favorite pins and um, Sunday prep and all this stuff every day during launch week. So mark your planners for that as well. Okay, now oh, I see your guesses. Let's see. Okay, I don't see. I don't, I don't think anybody's guessed it right yet. Okay, um, I'm gonna answer questions. And thanks, Dusty and Hannah, for sending me these. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't read. Okay, are you going to touch on electronic clutter at all? So, in a simplified life, um, which we have we have a simplified life my book for sale on our website by the way it's on sale with our spring cleaning sale right now so go get it but there's a whole chapter on uh simplifying technology and that includes electronic clutter so just a tip on electronic clutter um is a use zip ties to tie cords together um if you have like one of like messy jumble of cords use zip ties to tie them together they're super cheap um, or you just use rubber bands or you can use binder clips or you can even just use a hair tie um, to kind of keep all those together. Also, if you have like if you have cords and stuff everywhere, put them all in one drawer, like one place. Kind of like we talked about earlier with the nail files, one place for all that together. Um, and yes, I would say like we have one drawer in our family room that we put it all in. And what you want to do is take a hair tie or rubber band or something and like wrap it around it. Does that make sense to keep them all from just getting into one big tangled mess? So I, I hope that helps. I, um, hey, to my team, I see you guys looking for the spring cleaning checklist. Um, the free printable library is where that's located to anyone looking for it. The, um, if you just go to the free printable library, that's the link you need. It's on our website um, and you can get the spring cleaning checklist over there. Uh, yeah, okay, next. 
How do you get your loving husband on board? Let me just get my coffee. How long you guys have? You guys got a while? <laughs> um, so getting spouses on board with this can be difficult. And I understand that wholeheartedly because I'm married to someone who is very different than me. Um, I was raised in a house that like, we just did this. Like my mom is the ultimate. She's the original organizer. She taught me everything I know. And we just, um, we just lived like this. Like we, every Saturday we would pick up the house together and kind of organize things. My mom and I would have days where, um, she would come in and we would like go get breakfast and then we would go in my room and turn the music on and we dance and we'd clean out from under the bed and put things away. And I get that. I get that. Like not everyone's brain works that way. So if you, if your spouse or somebody in your house is like resistant, here's my advice. Um, sit down and talk to them about that, about this and tell them what it is that you want to do. Let them know that, that you want to know, like if there's anything that you, they don't want touched. Um, they don't want you to go through or, you know, what I did with my husband the last time I did this was his t-shirts. Like he's super attached to his old SAE fraternity t-shirts. Um, and he just didn't want me to choose which ones he got to keep. So I just took them out of his drawer. And this is, this is my philosophy is like, if you're going to clean out a drawer you take everything out, right? Like don't go through it one by one as you take it out, but like remove it all, get a clean empty drawer and then go through it one by one. Um, and so what I did is I just went through it one by one and I kind of sorted it like t-shirts over here, long sleeve t-shirts here. And then when he came home, he went through it and was like, you know, here's the ones that I feel comfortable getting rid of. Cool. Like I don't, I don't push it on him to like, let me get rid of anything. I think he needs to get rid of pick your bells. <laughs> um, and also when it comes to things like housekeeping with someone who maybe doesn't think the same way you do, um, I always use this example, but like laundry, I do laundry every day. Usually I'm kind of behind right now because I've been really busy, but I usually do it every day and I put his laundry away because he just doesn't really feel the need to put it away every day. And to me it's clutter. So I kind of just want it gone. So I just do it. Like it's fine. I'd rather, rather not, you know, it become a thing. So I just put it away. Um, I hope that helps and you're going to run into that and that's totally fine. Um, I will say that like, as we've done this many times and Brian's kind of like experienced that it like feels really good to have a house that's kind of put together and um, free of clutter. He loves it. Like he appreciates it and he's supportive of it and all that. So I hope that helps. Um, and I totally understand that. So if you have more questions, let me know. All right. Will you be addressing toys as well? Yeah. That's the other thing that I need to really work on. Um, so my kids each have a bedroom, um, but then our play, we have a playroom and our playroom is really messy right now because of Christmas. Like there's just a lot of stuff everywhere. Um, and the way that I kind of approach toys is I've made a lot of mistakes with toys. So like one time I thought it would be a good idea to color code our Legos. And that was when Brady was, I didn't, the twins weren't here yet, but um, Brady was probably three or four. And I took all those Legos and I color coded them. And to me, I was like, this is great. All the reds are in this box. All the greens are in this box. And you guys are probably all laughing now. And you can imagine what happened three and a half minutes later when Brady was like, ah! <laughs> and everything just went everywhere. So now what we do, and I'll show you when we do this next, you know, uh, April 9th, um, we just have one big like old Tupperware bin. It's not a fancy bin. I don't even think I have a lid to it. It's just an old bin. It's large. It's like this big. And all the Legos go in the box, right? So when you're cleaning up, it's like, Brady, put your Legos away. Cool. So I'll go back in the box. And that's it, right? We don't have to be complicated. If you make it complicated, if you come up with a fancy complicated system for storing all your things, it's going to make your life not simplified. It's going to make it more complicated. So don't do that. There are dangers in over-organizing, seriously. Um, okay. Will the garage be on the list of rooms? Yes, we're doing that on Saturday. Uh, will you have a pre-work sheet? Yes, it is on the master plan, your prep work. Um, what is the hashtag again? I saw somebody send this out. The hashtag is ruthless declutter challenge. And the, the, um, the yard sale hashtag is simplified yard sale. Um, can you send the list early? Yes, I will send this a week out. I'll send this a week early to everybody, uh, on April 2nd. So you'll have a whole week. Oh, one more thing. 
one more thing, and I need to add this to our list of prep work. Do yourself a favor if you have kids. I did this a couple days ago and put it on Instagram. If you have kids that have like a million stuffed animals, and I, I, I don't know, I'm one of those people that like, if I'm buying something for my kids, I always tend to gravitate towards stuffed animals because it's like, it's like a baby and they love it and it's just so cute how they get so excited and then they like love the baby and hold the baby. So we have a lot of babies. We have a lot of stuffed animals. Um, and I'm getting better. My husband is always like, stop buying stuffed animals. Um, but go to the stuffed animals. Okay. And if you're me, you have to rip the bandaid and be like, you're not actually hurting their feelings when you put them in a bag, but get the stuffed animals that you think they will not miss, put them in a bag and set them aside, hide them if you can. Now, um, I did this to Brady. Don't tell him I did this to Brady the other day. He has some stuffed animals that I don't think he even know exist. They're just taking up space in his room. Um, one of them was this giant Pikachu thing, Pokemon. He's so into Pokemon and I don't understand it. I'm trying to learn it so I can like have a conversation with him about it. But like, I know Pikachu. We, have a, we had a giant Pikachu that he won at a carnival. And it, I don't even think he knows it exists, but it's in his room and it's huge and it's just clutter. So I put it in a bag along with some other stuffed animals that like are ready to go to new homes. And I hid them. And that was like last weekend. And he still hasn't noticed that they're gone. So just a tip maybe you could go and hide some things. <laughs> and then if they don't miss them by April 9th, you're good. Um, now, I will also say with older children, and I, I know I need to do this with Brady, I just haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, it's also really good to teach them, and we do this with clothes with him and with toys. Um, stuffed animals are harder with me because he's just really attached to them, but teach them that there are kids who could really use these things. And that's a fact. Like there are kids who could really benefit from the, the toy you don't use or the clothes that you can't wear any longer. Um, and that's just a beautiful thing to teach a kid at any age. So there's that. Okay, what else? Um, how do you stay motivated to prep, to be organized and to be productive? Oh man, um, I, just, I just operate, and I, I just operate better when I feel like I can breathe in my house. Um, like I'm, I'm better at cooking dinner when my kitchen isn't covered with just junk all over the counters. I feel like I can think. And because this is my job and my whole job with the simplified brand and our planners and my books and things, because I, it's just a way that I think all the time. And I really think that goes back to my mom. Like she always taught me these things. Kids don't, kids aren't born knowing how to live simply or like in an organized manner. They're not born knowing how to clean their rooms, right? We have to teach them those things. So my mom just made it important to go and to teach me, like, I'm going to teach you how to make your bed so that you can do it yourself. So, you know, so she taught me how to make, make my bed. And it's important for me to teach those things to my kids too, because I think there's in a bigger picture, there's a lot of peace found in feeling like your home is your home. And your home may not need to be as organized as mine is. Like my my house is a mess right now, by the way. My house is not always like perfectly picked up. These shelves look beautiful because I styled them for you right before I got on Facebook Live. I cleaned them up. Um, but if you saw my desk right now, you'd laugh. I'm just a normal mom who has three kids and is working as well um, and trying to keep up. Like there's just a lot of things that have to get done and I feel like I'm better at it um, when things are when things are prepared for if that makes sense. So I hope that answers your question. Um, okay. So if I don't have a garage apartment living, should I just clean my car? Absolutely. I love that idea. So if we, if on one of these days we're tackling a room or a space that you don't have, or it doesn't apply to you, or is one that you're feeling good about, like you don't need to go to, that's cool. Like use that day to either play catch up or do something else. Like, I love that you said your car. If you don't have a garage, that's awesome. Do, you know, go tackle your car. I know my car <laughs> used to clean out right now. Um, it just accumulates things inside, cups and all of that. Okay, will there be a hashtag to share our progress and build community support? Yes, and that is the ruthless, that is hashtag ruthless declutter challenge. It's long, I'm sorry. I couldn't figure out a way to shorten it. Um, but that would be a great place for us to kind of connect. Also, we have a Facebook group here that is the Simplified Community Group. 
and we would love for you to come and be part of it. There are over 20,000 people in that group right now. Right, right now. It got so big so fast that we made it to where um, my team posts conversation starters and then everyone kind of converses on those posts. So it's a it's a group where a zillion people aren't posting all the time and like filling up your newsfeed, which is what happened when we first started it. We had to figure out how to simplify the community group um, when we got on there. But you can go and connect with other people and share ideas and before and after pictures and all of that. We would also love for you to share your progress on Instagram because I think that's the, a way that we also build community and support. And I'm gonna be going through all of your pictures and all of your progress and hopefully encouraging you. And my team will be as well. Um, I'm so excited for this. Like this is our second one, but only because I did the first one by myself. <laughs> so the second one, I did the first one while I was writing A Simplified Life and this was last year. And this is our second one and we're doing it with all of you. So I'm so excited about the community aspect of that as well. Okay. Um, somebody asked, are the simplified planner covers the same for the January editions? Yes. So we have two launches every year. We have one in May and we have one in September. So one in the spring, one in the fall. And uh, the one in the spring, which is coming up, is for planners dated August 2018 through July 2019. We have a daily edition and a weekly edition, six cover options in each. And then in the fall, we launch our regular year editions. So those are editions dated January 2019 through December 2019. Um, and we have daily, weekly of those. And they're the same covers, right? Same covers from the spring, different dates. Does that make sense? Because some people work on the academic year and some people like to work on the calendar year. Um, will I be able to get a calendar edition on May 2nd or just the academic? Just the academic. So if you're looking for the calendar year edition that you would begin in January, that will be September 5th at 10 a.m. Eastern time. What do you do with toys that you're saving for your younger children? Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, the toys that we have, the kids all kind of play with them. Brady has his own toys like robot type stuff and Legos that are like the tiny, tiny Legos that the twins aren't really into yet because they're only three. Um, and Brady has that stuff on a, a higher table or like on a higher shelf in his room where he keeps that stuff. And then the, the babies, well, there are three, I still call them the babies. They, um, their smaller things are on like lower shelves. Does that make sense? So Brady's are kind of kept out of their way. Um, if I was going to save something of Brady's for the little ones, then we would just either put it in like one of the twins closets or something like that. That's what we've done with clothes. So like as Brady outgrows something, we put his clothes in and not all of his clothes. If there's something that's like stained or ripped or like really pilled really bad or shrunken really bad, um, we will get rid of that. But we will keep the clothes that Tyler will eventually wear in a Tupperware bin. I showed you guys this on Instagram the other day. My closet was a disaster. Um, we keep it in a Tupperware bin with like the age written on it. And then I kind of just pull it out as we go for him. OK, um, what else? I think that's it. All right. Do you guys have any other questions at all? Um, what do you do about birthday gifts? So I think what you're asking is like, what if you get a birthday gift? that you don't need? I don't know, I might need some explanation on that question just to make sure I'm answering this one correctly. Um, if you get, and I've been asked this before, so I'll answer it this way. If you get presents or gifts for your kids that turn into clutter that you don't necessarily need, um, let them have them. I mean, you know, for me, like at Christmas time, my kids got a whole bunch of stuff from, you know, grandparents and friends and whatever that like they might not necessarily need whatever, it was a gift. They play with it. And if and when it turns into something that they either don't use and, and or we're not going to save. I do a lot of like toy rotation. So I put things in little Tupperware bins and I'll like get one box down and let them play with it for a week or two. And then we kind of rotate it out with another box of things and they think it's like brand new and it's awesome. Um, but, you know, eventually when it becomes something that they aren't using or they aren't going to use eventually, then you know, don't eat it. Um, okay, when throwing out magazines, what do you do to organize articles you want to keep? All right, y'all, you ready for my real talk? You don't need to keep magazine articles. That's just me. Now, you might be different than me and you might wanna save certain things, but I 
Um, I don't save anything. I don't save, I mean, magazines. Like I don't save, I don't save any magazines. Um, I've not even, I have a couple, like I was in Forbes magazine a couple of years ago and I think I have one copy of that, but that's, I don't think I've saved any other magazines. Um, my grandmother saved everything. Like she saved, she was the, she's on my dad's side. She was the opposite of my mom. And she saved like Southern living magazine from like 1960. And she had like every magazine known to man. And I, I remember seeing that one day and being like, what do you do with it? Like, do you read it? You don't read it again. So you have to just think about, and you don't have to live, but you don't have to do things the way that I do it. Maybe you will pick up a magazine and read it again one day. And if that's truly the case, then save it. Absolutely save it. Um, you can stack it up nicely on a shelf. You can put it inside a little, uh, magazine box. Um, you can do whatever you want with it to like save things like that. But if you're not going to pick it back up again and read it one day, like question that purpose in your heart as you do this whole declutter thing, are you really going to pick that up again and read it one day? If the answer is probably not, you don't keep it. That's the ruthless part. Okay. So you have to question some of your decisions as you go through this. Like, why do I want to keep this? Right. Do I really need it? And you may, the answer may surprise you. The answer may be, yeah. I mean, I've had people say to me like Thanksgiving, I love to cook with my grandchildren and they come over and we make apple pies together. And so I need three carrot peelers. What do you think about that? And I'm like, eat them. That's awesome. Um, don't like, don't get rid of things just because, you know, you heard somebody say, keep one of everything. Do you keep what you need for your life? Um, yeah, I hope that helps. All right. Uh, do you put cleaning supplies in the same place or do you put some in every bathroom, for ex for example, so it's easier to get when you decide to clean? Nope. I put them all in one place. So all the cleaning supplies are uh, locked up under my sink in my kitchen. And then in my laundry room, I have some extra cabinet space in there. And so I have some backups of like when you have we find BOGO sales, especially at Publix, they also they often run the BOGO sales on cleaning supplies. I'll I'll get extras and I'll put them in just one cabinet of staples that we always use. And then that way when we run out, I have it and I paid less for it. Okay. Is this good? Did I get did I get all your questions? I think I think I got all of the questions. Um I am so excited to do this with you guys. I'm also so excited to do the Simplicity Challenge again with Faith Gateway. So I really hope that you'll go there and sign up for it and do that with us starting April 1st um, and do it for the whole month of April. They'll be posting on their account too, just the daily reminders. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, let me just catch one or two more questions before I hop off. I think I can grab them. I see them here on the side. Okay. Um, do you have a specific number of clothes you have for kids so it doesn't get overwhelming? Example, five shirts and shorts. No, um, my kids don't have a lot of like storage space for clothes and their dressers. And so I just have what fits in there. Um, so no, I don't really have any kind of like number that I stick to. Um, okay. I just saw, I saw someone say, Ashley, I've been doing what you say to do with kids artwork. Um, and it's hard, but it's been amazing. Yes, I totally understand that. So my, my advice on kids artwork actually came from my mom. Um, she was a kindergarten teacher for many, many years and she saw me saving like lots and lots of kids artwork. And I used to do this thing where I would take pictures of it and put it in a little book, uh, like print out a little book of other artwork. And the first year I did that, I didn't pick up the book to look at it at all. And my mom was like, what are you doing? <laughs> So my mom said to me, and I kind of passed this on, when your children make artwork at school and they bring it home to you and they hand you, like Caroline made a cow at school the other day and it had this little round piece that was the smile, but she put it on upside down accidentally and it was a frowny face. So it was, it was the sad cow. And she thought it was hysterical that it was the sad cow. So she brings sad cow home to me and I'm cracking up because it's so funny. And I take sad cow and I put sad cow on, we have these like three cork boards and I put sad cow on the cork board. She has one, Tyler has one, Brady has one. And we just play their artwork up there. And we all laughed and talked about sad cow and how awesome it was. And it lives up, it's actually still up there, but it'll stay there until the next thing comes in and then it's gone. So we'll throw it away. 
And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. But it served its purpose. So the purpose for Sad Cow was to come in our house, Caroline to be like, look what I made. It's so funny, mom. And me to say, wow, you're an awesome artist and you're so funny. Look at this sad face. Why is Sad Cow sad? And then let's put Sad Cow on the thing so we can all look at it and admire it. And we're admiring it and that's its purpose, right? Like its purpose is not just to sit in a box somewhere for me to show her one day when she doesn't really remember it. Um, now I will say if it has a hand foot, a handprint or a footprint, I'm, I will save that and put it in little treasure boxes I have for the kids. Um, but with artwork that they just bring home, it goes on the board, it serves its purpose and goes away. Right. And I've been doing that now for probably about a year and a half and it really works. I have no regrets at all. Um, but I also know that it's, I also know that that's super hard. So what else? I think I got the rest of these questions, I would pop in and try to um, answer any questions that I missed. But thank you guys for joining me. I haven't done a Facebook Live in a long time. And I feel like end of last year before Simplified Lives release, we did so many of them and I, I really miss them. And I'm excited to do even more during launch week before our May 2nd launch, um, after cover reveal on April 25th and before our launch on May 2nd at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So. If you have any questions, post them here. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter list that's here somewhere in the caption. And I will be emailing you the Ruthless Declutter Challenge Master Plan that we just went over um, on April 2nd. And we'll all do this together, okay? Thank you guys. I hope that you have a wonderful day and be sure to pop by our shop at emilylay.com and check out our spring cleaning sale before all the things sell out. See ya.